So there are at least six ways to punch a hole through an object in ZBrush. And we'll go through them one by one here. The first way is to use live Boolean. I'll just turn off these other samples here. Uh, and in this instance, I just have a cube and a cylinder. Um, if I change that cylinder to subtractive mode and I start uh, the live Boolean, I make sure that live Boolean is on. I'm going to press Shift F to get out of show polyframe and you can see that that cylinder is now being cut out of that. We can move the cylinder around and it's cutting out through that object. The cylinder itself is a little bit faceted so we can always uh, use dynamic subdivision on that. I'll just bring it back so we can see what's happening here. So I press Shift F to show that again. If we go down to geometry and uh, we could either divide this normally um, or use dynamic subdivision and when I turn that on I'll press Shift F so we can see the effect of it. Um, so that's the effect there and in order for this to be a final result that we actually save as a sub tool we need to hit make boolean mesh as long as we hit ds dynamic subdivision it will actually take into effect the dynamic subdivision that's being used on the cylinder there so if we hit make boolean mesh a new tool will be created and that is the tool that's created that's the first way um, the next way is a dynamesh um, so this tool here is a Dynamesh. I'll just turn off live boolean so we can see our frames as normal. And on this one, um, if we choose a new brush, uh, press B, I for insert me, uh, insert primitive, insert multi mesh brush rather. Select a primitives, uh, and we select a cylinder in this instance, and we just hold down Alt and drag that cylinder on. And that cylinder is actually there. Well, I'm just going to make it a little bit longer by expanding it out here. You can see that it's in negative mode. So as long as this goes through the entire object, when we next get rid of our mask and then perform a Dynamesh operation, this will actually cut a hole through our mesh. So that's the second way to do it. The next one is to use a Dynamesh bridge. So we'll be using the Z Modeler tools here, but um, we just create a mask. I'll create a uh, mask circle. We'll be doing that. If we, a mask circle will actually punch a hole through onto the other side of the mesh as well. I press Control W and we now have the same polygroup on both sides, which means we can change to a Z modeler tool and using Q mesh, um, if we get in close enough to one of these, we can choose Q mesh and the polygroup island, and then we can simply push that island through and that will create a hole. This instance it's not very clean, um, even when we read Dynamesh, um, it's not as clean as you'd like, so just hold down Control and Shift and change this to a uh, clip circle center uh, and then holding down control and shift and alt um, you can push a circle around there hold down alt and it will clip to that and it will clean up your hole cool uh, the next version is a z modeler q mesh so in this instance if you hover over uh, avert we can change to split we can split the point if we click on the next time, it will go exactly the same size rather than dragging. So we know we'll have the same size and our QMesh polygroup island is the same as the last time. So we can then just push through there and we get a hole with that as well. Um, when you go into dynamic subdivision mode, I press D to do that. Um, you'll get a nice uh, crisp edge on that. Just crease the polygroups um, if you want the rest of that to be creased as well. So dynamic on, we'll, we'll clean that up. Next one is the Z Modeler Bridge. So the Z Modeler Bridge is um, when we have the same thing, a hole or a thing like that. And maybe we've actually, for some reason, we've deleted this polygroup island. So if you have a hole in your mesh that looks like this, then using the hovering over an edge, you can change to your bridge tool and bridge two holes. We select an edge on the first and we select any edge on the other hole doesn't matter which and it will then bridge between those two and the usual applies crease polygroups if you'd like it to be um, well actually that will actually crease all the intern because they're polygroups as well so maybe don't do that and um, but crease them manually on the outside the next one um, or the final one rather is the Z modeler bridge to polygons so on this one if you have a mesh and you'd like to punch a hole from here through to an awkward angle such as here you can hover over one choose bridge and change to two polys select your first polygon select your poly your second polygon and you'll see that we've now punched a hole through that as well um, hope these tips help as ever 
please feel free to leave comments and do subscribe if you find them useful. Thanks. Bye.